Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Tear Maker. We've got a special guest with us today. Hello, Matcha. Hello. Uh, so we are going to um, kick right off with the tier list. And what I'm going to say is, first things first, we've got the class for eight, seven, which is going to go into the F tier. Now, the class... We three... love that. Well, yeah. Uh, the class 387... It's a is... great way to start. Yeah. It's not the worst way to start, uh, put it that way. So, the class 387 is basically, like, just one of the worst types of Electro Star. But it's not the worst type of Electro Star, as we should see later on in the video. Um, now, one of the things I don't really like about the 387 is how it's got those, like, circular windows instead of those rectangular ribbon windows, which I really seem to like. So, it actually looks a lot older than some of the other Electro Stars, like the 375 or the 377. Um, and also, like, pretty much all of the liveries of the 387 are really quite boring, except for, like, Heathrow Express has, like, quite a good livery. Um, also another thing with the 387 as well is pretty much got all ironing board seats, except for the reclining leather 2 plus 1 first class seats of Heathrow Express. Again, Heathrow Express kind of carrying the 387 out of K tier a bit. Um, another thing as well, uh, this is more optimistic, the 387, it does have ironing board seats, but at least it's got a table every seat, which is more than what can be said for some other trains, to be honest. Uh, yeah, what do you I think, Matcha? I mean, I don't really have much to say because I haven't personally been on a 387. I mean, but the based on the based on the based on the points you've brought up, I personally said that F is probably a great tiers person. Yeah, it's not like the worst train. There are some good points about it, and if I sort my local line, I'd be quite overjoyed. But again, yeah. Also, I think I'd quickly bring up if you wonder why my expectations are so low. It's mainly because the trains in my local area are just really that bad. So like anything with tables, for example, course, is three, probably quite high. Yeah. Three seven six, yeah, we hate the three seven six. <laughs> yeah. Of course, seven seven. Yeah, but especially the three seven six. Like, my goodness, <laughs> that, that train is just something else and not in a good way. Why is it still in service? Exactly. Okay, fine. That's a bit harsh. It's not like it's in X tier, but. Why has it not been refurbished in like twenty over twenty years? Right, so we're done with the three eight seven and now we're going to go for the Arriva Cross Country class one seven class one seventy turbo star, which is going to go into the top of A tier. Now the class one seventy, I mean cross country does have quite a bad reliability record. Um, but the livery is quite good, actually. I quite like the cross-country livery. Um, it looks quite sleek. Let's see, what is it? Um, yeah, it's got, like, an X, like, pointed to, like, the nose of the front of the unit. It's got, like, these brown uh, ends and, like, grey throughout with, like, oh, it, yes, pink this, doors. This quite a vibe. Yeah. I, I like how this looks. Like, the 2 plus 2 seating, and then the 2 plus 1 in first class is quite good. So, it's the... Uh, yeah, it's quite good, quite comfortable. Two toilets per unit. Uh, like, it's particularly the standard class seats is what I quite like because they just fit so well for a regional or mainline train in standard class. So, like, two plus two with tables at every seat. Like, the tray tables in the aisle seats are a bit small, but other than that, it's really quite a good train. Also, another thing as well, um, the rectangular doors and the windows with them, as well as, like, the rectangular ribbon windows. These trains do not look 25 years old, but they are. Well, roughly. Actually, they're, no, they're older. I think they're, like, start production 98, 90. I think. So That's the first... 26 years old. Yeah, they don't look that old because of these, like, rectangular features, but they are. I mean, the catering is quite reasonable as well because you've got, like, cross-country, so, like, you've got, like, you've got, like snacks and stuff, so pretty reasonable to be honest I, I quite i quite like the Arif cross country 170 uh but yeah not too too much else of no um speaking of cross country next up we have got the oh i'm not sure if i should mention it now or not i'm trying to like search for it uh yeah we're gonna search for it so the um, Arriva Cross Country Class 221 or 220 Super Voyager 
and it's lumped with Avanti because it's quite similar. The 221 Super Wait. Voyager is going to go. Over. It does. A re do you mean Arriva as in the same operator as the buses yes. in London? Yes, actually, yeah. Um, so I personally don't like Arriva that Arriva's buses that much. Yeah, but their trains are quite reasonable, especially when it comes to Chiltern, which we'll get to later. But anyway, the 220 and 221 Super Void, 220 Voyager and the 221 Super Voyager, both exactly the same in the high end of S tier. Now, uh, the Cross Country and Avanti have got really poor reliability, but the thing is, and I'm mainly focusing on Cross Country's 220s and 221s here. Just, just like the turbo style, the livery is like really nice. I mean, the rounded like windows and stuff doesn't help to its age. But to be fair, it looks about like 10, 15 years old rather than 20, 25 years old. So I, I do think yeah. they are like really good trains. Like the standard class seats, they are old virgin train seats. They're slim, but they're mm. extremely comfortable. Even the tray tables are quite big. But so you've got tables at every seat. I mean, they do suffer from overcrowding, but that's as a result of partly cross countries fault and partly DFT's fault. But first class is really good as well because you've got like reclining two plus one seats. Um, yeah, like also as well, you've got like the catering, which is pretty good. And then on Avanti, they got like a snack bar as well. So the Avanti two two one's a little bit better than cross countries, but. Yeah, they are really quite good trains, and I'd definitely be overjoyed if they were on my local route. Yeah, I'm going to be milking that. Oh, my bad. My notes just popped up on the wrong tab there. But yeah. Oops. Uh, yeah, just not much, nothing personal, but like, you got, you guys got a sneak peek at what my notes look like. Right, so the next train in my tier list is going to be... The C two C class three five seven, which I have put in the E tier. Now, the three five seven is roughly on par with some of our local trains, except it's really quite new. So again, rectangular doors, rectangular windows, rectangular ribbon windows, but the seats. They're two plus two or three with no tables except for like a few cab ends on some of the 357s. They're generally not really that good trains in terms of seating, but to be fair, they only run as far as Fenchurch Street to Shoebury Ness, so it's not too, too far. Uh, mm. There is no catering. Uh, but the operator is really quite good. High customer satisfaction, high reliability. Uh, yeah, they turn out to be better than you might expect. So the 357 is a bit bad. There are things that can be improved. But it's got such a good starting place that I don't think it's too, yeah. too bad, to be fair. Now... Yeah, I'm just consolidating. Oh yes, Chiltern Mainline. Opportunity, opportunity to talk about Chiltern Mainline. With the Chiltern Mainline Class 168, which I, as a matter of fact, have decided to place, uh, if I can find it actually, uh, yeah, uh, in the A tier below the 220. Well, not 220, the 170. So the 168, yes, A tier. Now, Chiltern Mainline is basically, like, the best operator. And the reason I say that is, it is, from my understanding, the only train operating company that's still holding on to its original um, post-privatisation franchise. So, uh, Chiltern Mainline was bought from uh, National Rail. I think it was 1996 or roughly around that time. And it's still... I mean, it has been bought out, but it still is the same train operating company as it was in 1996. Chiltern Mainline's got an exceptionally high reliability record. It's got very high customer satisfaction. It is run by Arriva as well. Now, the Class 16A, only some of them actually have the front profile you see in the tier maker. Most of them's got a profile similar to the 170. But even worst case, 
Uh, they all got like rectangular doors, rectangular windows, rectangular ribbon door windows as well. They're really good trains. Seats similar to the standard class of 170s by cross country. They're really quite comfortable. I mean, they don't have catering or a first class, um, but they they are really quite good trains. I do like them. Uh, do do you have uh, match? Do you have any opinions on any of these trains that I've I've not really given you the opportunity to speak, have I? But do you have any opinions on any of these uh, trains? No, don't don't worry. I I don't know much about these trains. I'll probably talk more when we get to like southeastern and Thames. Yeah, fair enough. And south, south Speaking of that sort of area, um, we are coming close to the Elizabeth Lines, class 345, which is going straight into the Q tier. Not K tier, Q tier. Now, do you have any opinions first? I'll let yeah. you speak. So, just in theory, the 345 would be a great train. Yeah. And the, the 345 would be a great train if it were used on a route. That didn't run from Abbey Wood to Reading. Oh gosh. Yeah. Anything else? No, no toilets and no catering. Oh my gosh, and no first class either, right? That is absolutely outrageous. Yeah, they're running like uh, inner suburban to middle suburban through the city as well. So in essence, outer suburban duties with terrible amenities and. The no toilets is just, it could be deemed discrimination against people with like bladder issues because like these trains do run very long duties. So uh, yeah, the three, four, five. Uh, I'll voice my own opinions. Matt just said most of them. So no toilets, no first class, no catering. But something that wasn't brought up is mostly I think it's latitudinal seating. So like bench style seats for most of it. There's no tables. The seats are quite uncomfortable. Uh, it is air conditioned and it is quite new, but it doesn't look new. Like, in my opinion, it looks quite a bit older than a class 170 and the 357. And I'm gonna go so far to say, it looks a bit older than a 168 actually. Um, even with the old cab ends. Three, four, five, three. It looks like it belongs on Southeastern. Yeah, also looks quite old imagine, as well. Imagine, imagine the three four five mm -hmm. in replacement of the three seven six. Oh yeah, I mean, would I be happy if that was the case? Kind of. I prefer the seven oh seven, and I prefer like the networkers. But if I got that instead so of three seven six, yeah. Because the three four five is basically just the three seven six, but without signing boards for seats and air conditioning. Yeah. I mean, also, it's like run by TFL as well. Yay, it's kind of good. There's like some good things to talk about it, but not too much actually. It's quite quite a bad train. And of course, it runs quite locally to me. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to look for the next train, which is. Uh, I'm trying to look for its placement. Indeed, it is the East Midlands Railway Class 158, which is going to go below the other Turbo Stars in A tier, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. Now, the thing about the East Midlands Railway Class 158 is that I absolutely they share a birthday with me. The really good trains. Uh, they, uh, That's they, really good. they don't have uh, catering or first class or, uh, well, catering or first class they don't have, but they do have got uh, tables at every seat. Um, two plus two, quite comfortable. Uh, the operator, East Britain Drow, is really quite good as well. So, yeah, something to take note home about. Uh, yeah, also the livery is quite nice, both new and old. Uh, I don't think you've got anything to say, Matcha, do you? Not particularly, no. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, looking for our next train. Speaking of East Midlands Railway, we have got the East Midlands Railway Class 170, which sits just above the 158 in A tier. Now, the 170 uh, is 
quite a bit newer than the 158. Um, again, the operator is really quite good. The train uh, is really good as well. It's got those rectangular doors, windows, ribbon windows, all the good stuff. Uh, it doesn't have catering or first class, but it's got tables at every seat. Yeah, air conditioning, quite good. Um, but not too, too much else to say, uh, unless you've got anything to say, Matcha. Yeah. Nope. Fair enough. Uh, looking through our next train, which is quite hard to source. Oh, it is the East Midlands Railway Class 360, which is going to sit in the E tier. Now, the windows are rounded, so it looks a bit older than the 357. Uh, but there are no tables, no catering, no first class, and they are running out of suburban duties up to Corby. They really need to be a lot better. Um, but I will say this as well, Matcha, that is not East Midlands yeah. Railway's fault. They wanted to do that, but the DFT stepped in and stopped them from giving these upgrades that I say. So in relation to the 360, it is purely the fault of the DFT and not East Midlands Railway because, uh, interestingly, East Midlands Railway is trying to side with me, not directly, but like they share the same ideals as me, but the DFT is not letting them do that. So it's purely, again, purely the fault of the DFT, East Midlands Railway is doing their best. But, yeah, anything hate, to... Like, why do they not add toilets or first class or tray tables or anything on the train? There are toilets on the 360. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, all I agree with. Like, why don't they? But, like, but on trains like the 345 and the 376. Money! Also, I think, like, just not necessary. You'll get more money. You'll get no. more money from a first, from a first class. Well, it's quite hard. But basically, they're making it an inferior product that they do provide, so they can use it as an excuse to get rid of it because no one wants it. But when you make first class the same as standard class, that's obviously going to happen to like Southern, basically. But if you provide actual good first class, then yeah, it will make a lot more sense. Now the three sixty. Uh, the livery is good though, I'm going to give them that, but uh, yeah, the operator is good too, uh, yeah. Next up we have got the first Great Western class 165 which is going to go into C tier. Now, Ew, diesel train. Look, it's middle of the road, it's the networker but in a diesel train so it's a little bit worse. Uh, also, the 166 is just better than the 165. Uh, they don't have air, these don't have air conditioning. They do have toilets. They used to have a first class back when this livery was used. And speaking of livery, the First Great Western Dynamic Lines livery is truly the best livery to ever exist. And I mean ever. Wait, wait which class is this? 165. Easily the best like livery. Let's see. Is it the southern one? It's, in the grey one? Yeah, the dynamic lines. Like, this one that I'm like, putting my mouse cursor over. So, I mean... Yeah. I mean, they're reasonable for their duties. Assuming they aren't being used on the Cardiff support of one, which I think are the 166s. But I'll mention that when we get to the 166. So, yeah. Uh, just... That, that's what I have to say about the 165 by First Great Western, pretty much. Yeah. Next up, we've got the 166 by First Great Western, which is going to go into the B tier. Now, the 166 is basically a 165, but with air conditioning, carpeted floors, and then first class. Now, the 166 um, is quite a good train. But I'm not going to mention Cardiff to Portsmouth either because uh, that wasn't around at the time this livery was used. So for like London to Oxford, it was fair. Like they did have tables in standard, but they did have it in first class. And yeah, I'll give them that. First Great Western, again, the livery really good. But not too, too much else to say, to be fair. 
Now, yeah. again, all the good trains seem to be bunching up right next to each other. And I think I might have semi-forgotten the class number of this train. And then the 800 just appears in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yeah, we don't talk about that. But anyway, the class 720 is going to sit, I think, into the BT? Yes. In front of the 166. Now, these are quite new trains, designed to be the opposite of the 700, and they are better than the 700. They do look quite old, though, because all the designs are, like, rounded and stuff, and they don't do it in a futuristic new Route Master bus type of way. It just looks old in some mm. retrospects. But the interior is quite nice. Uh, apart from bays, you get tables you get tables at every seat. Um, there's no first class, no catering, but there are toilets. The 720 is quite a valid train. Uh, yeah. Uh, the livery is fair as well. Yeah. It's not too much else to say about the 720 which means we go on to the Greater Anglia it's class 745 which is going to go into the S tier below the 220 and 221 now there is one unique feature about the class 745 that I really do love it's their name it's a class 745 Stadloff Flirt. Love that. Yes, love that. And it's <laughs> it's brilliant. Now, these class 745s... Uh, you know, I might as well rank these Stansted Express version. I think it's going to go B tier as well. So I'm ranking them both uh, simultaneously. Now, the class 745, um, they both have table at every airline style seat they've got plenty of toilets also all like the traction motors are not underneath the floor but they're actually like stored in the middle of the train so it's great for say like autistic people or people with uh, sensory issues you don't really get those vibrations at all they're really quite good and also they've got level boarding as well which is a nice touch uh, so that's both the 745s now the 745 slash zero, which is the one I've put in S tier, also has uh, full width fixed tables at base of four. Uh, there's also a first class with two plus one seating. And also you have complimentary beverages in first class. You've got a trolley service and you've got a buffet as well. So these are really, really good trains. I really quite like the 745, especially the 745 slash zero or the intercity version of these trains uh do you have anything to say mm -hmm. and is this the 745 yes or any of these other trains in general um the i don't aside from its name being very good yeah and not particularly but i it it looks very futuristic in some it's ways, actually, yeah. Um, there are aspects of it which make it look quite new, but there are aspects that make it look a bit old as well. But it's definitely... Oh, curved windows. Yeah, it definitely looks new. That is, yeah. for sure, that is something... I don't... I'm not, I prefer if I had 3 by 2 seating there instead of 2 by 2 uh, I'm just checking my tier list because like, I've kind of lost track of like where I've even put these trains... Uh, haha. Yeah. So, in the B tier, yeah, we've got the 745, you've got the 720, um, and then you've got the 755, um, which actually deserves a place in A tier, roughly here, yes. The class 755 is basically like a 745, but, uh, no first class, no catering, still got tables at every seat. But also, it's a hybrid train, so it is, it does have a diesel mode, but matcha, hold on, yes. it's powered by this power pack car in the middle, so it's essentially a locomotive hauled train, so absolutely based, still got that Stadler Flirt name, but 
you don't feel the vibrations because it's all powered from the middle like it's just yeah and also you can still walk through the train even where the engines are you can still walk through it's not split into two like the apt but yeah uh, the again the operator quite good livery quite good there are aspects to make it look a bit old there is unfortunately no oh. catering but it is quite a good train overall oh. How many coaches does the EMU have? Sorry, which EMU? The 745? Uh. 12. So, like, the perfect number of coaches. But is, is that 12 with end gas? With what? It's 12, 12 two connected. It's 12 two sets of six coaches. No. No, actually. Like, it's not powered by a power pack car. It's just, like, at the... Um, end of like the sixth coach from whatever way you're looking but you can still walk through it um, and also the 755s are either uh, 2 and 2 to make 4 or 1 and 2 to make 3 including the power pack car as well but you can still walk through that so yeah uh, Greater Angulus fleet is quite good I do quite like it and I think without further ado <clears throat> we should go to the class 717 X tier. Uh, do you have anything to say, Matcha? Nope. Right. My go to, like, hate on the street. Right, so, first thing to ask, livery is, like, quite bad. Um, and then, like, it looks really old as well because, like, basically nothing has got that rectangular design. It's all, like, rounded. And then, for some reason, it's got emergency egress, but not an end gangway. So when they're coupled together to make 12 coaches, which they never are, they, they, they you can't walk in between them. It's basically two separate trains travelling at the same time. And the end gang, the, the emergency egress, it looks really ugly as well. Like, with an end gangway, it's maybe a bit ugly, but not as ugly. And also, it still serves an actual purpose. Um, the 717 also has a weird top speed of 85 miles per hour. Like, it should be either 75 or 100. You've got to pick a lane and a stick in it. And then you've got, like, no toilets, no tables, no first class, no catering. It is air-conditioned, but it is, uh, it's got ironing boards, so you'd prefer to stand up than sit down. There's no charging ports, no storage racks, I think... Uh, but yes, yeah, really quite a bad train. And basically, um, just want to say what yeah. Q tier translates to is bad but can be fixed, and X tier is bad and should be scrapped, in my opinion. They're just really, yeah. really bad. Like, it, it's so bad. Uh, uh, well, the best things to do, for, for example, the 345 yeah. add tray tables. Yeah. Also add tables and, uh, and retrofit and toilets. Just retro, just. Get rid of the whole interior, basically, and, like, replace it. But the 717, like, the exterior and, like, the function of the train is bad as well. That's the that's the thing. Like, the 345 is bad because of its interior, but 717 is ba bad all round. It, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very fond of the um, class 717. I am quite fond of Great Western Railway's Class 15A, which is going to go into the A tier. Ahead, I think it's in front, yeah, just in front of the Chiltern Mainline 16A. Now, the Class 158 by Great Western Railway, uh, have we even ranked a 158 yet, Matcha? Oh yeah, we have, the East Midlands Railway one. Yeah. I mean, the livery looks quite good. They're also three coaches long. Um... And then, like, uh, well, many of them are free coaches. The one five eights are like because they generally do like slightly shorter journeys than like say six to ten hour Norwich to Liverpool Lime Street. They are a little bit better suited. Uh, when it comes to Great Western Railway, they don't have first class catering, first class all catering, but they do have toilets. They've got tables at every seat. They're, they're quite good trains. Again, share a birthday with me. I really like it. Uh, Matcha, do you have anything to add to that at all? Hey? Matcha, are you there?
Right, so we've got the 165 and the 166, which I'm not going to take the wrong ranking because they're similar to the first Great Western one. So the 165 is going below the first Great Western in C tier, basically because like it's just it's the it's the leverage just looks a little bit worse. And then the 166, same reasoning, but also like to be fair, the 166 now has leather seats in first class, but they're being put Carter to Portsmouth. Journeys. Now, Great Western Railway wants to improve them, but again, the DFT's fault. So, do you have anything to say about that match, R? No. Fair enough. Uh, so, looking through. Aha! Two trains in a row that are destined for X tier. So, the Class 800, 800. and the 802 by Great Western Railway. Now, they are both. Okay. Centre scrapping. Yes! Now, I'm going to... Send straight to scrapping. Yes. Uh, so, I'm going to like note both of these at the same time. Right, so, Class 800. Um, well, both of them, right? They've got ironing board seats in both classes. They have... Well, they're falling apart. They look really... In some ways, it can actually look really old as well because of, like, no rectangles. Uh... Also, like, for some reason, they're an intercity train with metro-style pocket doors. They've got trains with doors that are not aerodynamically efficient, for some reason. Like, also, for some reason, the buffet is next to the driver's cab, which I can imagine would be quite distracting. Would you agree, Matcha? The pocket doors like the doors that Siemens make. No, the ones, well, sometimes. Siemens Desiro, yes not Siemens in general. So like the class 376 and 707, those types of doors. Like that's what the 800 and 802 the ones have. The ones where they're, they're tucked in. Yeah. Like, uh, also the bogeys crack on these trains. Uh, they've got very, very, very bad catering as well. Uh, it's, even in first class as well, even on the Pullman dining, it's just really bad. Um, and then, like, they're, they're bad from the beginning, but not only that, but the 800 is actually somehow even worse than the 802 because of, like, its diesel engines, like, just not as powerful. And then, like, they're under the coaches, and they vibrate a lot, even in electric mode, so it's just not friendly at all to people with sensory issues. So just really... And relate. Re yeah, I can relate as well. Really, really bad trains. Like, real, wow, what the hell really really I bad that's what that's the thing i have against like diesel buses and stuff yeah like but these just take it another level even with even electric mode is bad on these trains now next up we have got the class 332 which is going to go um in the bottom of s tier and uh these are quite high for the initial ranking but the thing is, like, the 332 had two plus two seats with tables at every airline self seat, and I think at every um, bay as well. In first class, it was one plus one reclining leather seats. And one plus one is very rare, mind you. Uh, so, yeah, they're just really quite amazing trains. Unfortunately, they've all been sent to scrapping now. Why they didn't send these trains oh, wow. here to scrapping? Is beyond me. Also, look really modern as well because of like the rectangular ribbon windows and rectangular doors and stuff. And also, the rounding on the front looks quite new. Uh, but like, why well, like, they sent those to scrap it instead of these? What the hell? It's a bit stupid. Exactly, Matcha. DFT and also like the train operating companies themselves. Like they can't get away with this either. Right. Next up is the Class 802 by Whole Trains. You would think I'd put it here, but no, 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 they're going in S tier. Of course not. I think, like, here, yes, here. Right now, the Class 802 by Whole Trains, unlike Great Western Railway, is actually an improvement on its predecessors, the 180s, which I've not actually listed here. So... We've got the 802 by, uh, if I can find it, yeah, 
Uh, it's by Whole Trains in my notes. There we go. The operator's good. Right. Whole Trains is an open access operator, which means that they have to rely on high customer satisfaction. Um, so previously, there was no catering and standard class, but they're now trialling a trolley service and also complimentary food in first class as well. The seats are quite good as well. Mm -hmm. 2 plus 2 in standard with tables every seat. 2 plus 1 in first class reclining tables every seat again. Although in first class they have fixed tables rather than tray tables at airline style seats. Uh, they've got a fair amount of toilets and the livery is quite nice as well. But yeah. Uh, do you have anything to say Matcha? Um, no. Right. Next up, we've got the 800 and 801, which managed to score themselves in very different places. Right, so the 801, sorry, the 800 is an X tier. Really, really bad. And then the 801 is actually really quite good. The 800 in general does be an X tier. Yeah, pretty much. And the 801 is an S tier train, which fits here. Now the reason the 800 is so low is because of like the general design. But the 801 is an electric train, it's quite good. The seats 2 plus 2 comfortable and standard, 2 plus 1 in first are reclining seats, uh, removable headrests. LNER's menu is really quite good as well. Um, and uh, uh, LNER's predecessor, Virgin Trains East Coast, uh, mostly stagecoach but used Virgin branding. Virgin Trains actually insisted on putting a buffet car in the 800 and the 801. Uh, unlike Great Western Railway, which use uh, trolley service, the 801 does have a buffet car as well. So it really brings it up really quite high. Um, they're quite comfortable as well. I would say they are a downgrade from their predecessors, but not by too much. They are generally quite good trains. Now, they are unreliable as well because of like bogey cracking um, but it's not as infamous as like the 800 with their aircon leakage so yeah I mean the LNR is also government owned so it's less subject to like industrial action like there's also that good amount of toilets uh, anything to sell on that matcha? Uh, nope let's continue yeah indeed right so You'll notice how many trains I've left out, that's because they're like really, really good trains. Now, the Class 350 by London Northwestern Railway is destined to go into the A tier. Uh, in front of the 755. Yeah. The Class 350, I'm not including, I think it's like the Slash 2, which is quite bad. But it's only like one of the subclasses that is bad. Now, the 350 doesn't have first class or catering, but it does have a fair number of toilets. It's got 2 plus 2 seating uh, with tables at every seat. Um, the Well, it just looks quite nice as well. It's also made by Siemens. It's got an end gangway that can be cobbled up. Uh, yeah. Uh, not too much else to say about the 350. Uh, do you have anything to say, Matcha? Uh, no thing. Right, then let's head on to the next train, the Class 803, which is the top of S tier. Now, uh, if I, 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 it'd be nice if one day I could actually get where I wanted. There we go. So the 803, it doesn't have first class or like a buffet car, but it's still got catering. The menu's quite good actually, both pre-order and regular order. And the 803 is run by Lumo. Now, firstly, the simple blue livery looks really sleek and elegant. Somehow, elevates the train to look really modern. Um, also, Lumo is a low-cost operator, but they've got some of the best seats in the market, to be honest. Not the best. I know what the perfect standard-class seats are, but the seats, right, believe this, Vacha, the, the, there's, like, a reading light. It's actually built in to the seat in front with two different brightness settings so it for the first time the 803 is a train that where the uh, airline style seats might actually be better than the bays of four now there are only two bays of four 
in uh, each coach. So there's like 10 base uh, in an entire five coach train. But that's not actually bad because, like, again, the air lifestyle seats are good. The tray tables are big. The seats are preset to a slightly reclined position as well. The seat cushioning is really comfortable. We've got winged headrest. There's lots of good things to say about the 803. Uh, do you have Did anything to say? Did watch real? Yeah. But do you have anything good to say about him, that chart? The thing with that is that Itachi Real is very hit or miss. Yeah, it is a bit. Uh, you are 100% right. As you can read, it's got the 802, which you put both of them in X to. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, the. And then I've got another Anything variant like... of the 802. That's the only. Yeah. That's the only problem with making pointy trains. Yeah, but Lumo oh, doesn't no, no. operate ten car trains, so they can get away with not having an end gangway because for them it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, anything else? No. Right. In that case, we have got the class one hundred and fifty by Northern, which is going to score at the top of F tier. Now, they run shorter routes in the 387, which is why they're higher, even without having tables. Now, the 150, the seats have got reasonable amount of padding, but the, the 3 plus 2, seats are whacked wherever they are, so there are some, like, bench-style seats as well. They're, they're quite... It's not the most comfortable train, but it would be a welcome change from the norm if it appeared on my local line. Also, there is... Um, some 150s are free coaches as well, so it's quite it's something to note. But yeah, it's quite quite it, is, it can be improved, but it's definitely better than some trains that have already been scored, for example. So yeah, you got mm -hmm. anything to say about that? And no. Right. In that case, we've got the class 158 by Northern. Which is going to score the top of D tier. Now, it's got ironing board seats, which doesn't help, but they've got 2 plus 2. Which seats. stops us from getting A tier. Kind of. Yeah, maybe. But it's got tables at every seat. The toilets are reasonable. They've got end gangways. The livery is okay, I guess. They've got no catering, no first class. But it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's on the cusp of being a really good train, but it's just not quite there. It's That's why it's like D tier instead of like F or K tier. So yeah, you got anything else, Nacho? No. Right, in that no. case, we've got the Class 170, also by Northern, which is going to net itself into the A tier, I think? Uh, still trying to find it. Yeah, it's there in the A tier. I think like here. Yes, A tier. Right now, the Class 170 by Northern is pretty similar to the Cross Country one, except there's no catering and there's no first class. It's just quite a generic, like, 170 just standard class but still a good standard class the seats are quite comfortable and you've got tables every seat uh, yeah that's pretty much it nothing else to add unless if match has got anything to say no i don't right in that case we've got the 195 and the 331 which are both going to be ranked at the exact same time now they're going to be put at the top of b tier the 331 scoring above the 195 because it's an electric version suffers from fewer vibrations. Also, the seats are reportedly more comfortable on the 331, except they're the exact same. Right, so they're ironing boards, but apparently they're a bit more comfortable. There's no first class or catering, but 2 plus 2 with tables at every seat, and the majority of seats are actually bays of 4. So, props to Northern for that. They're, they're quite good. The number of toilets, I think there's like one per train set, but I could be wrong. 
Now, in terms of the 195, it's just, yeah. It's, yeah. Do you have anything to say? No, I don't. Right. So, uh, next up is the 331, which is as neutral as a train you're going to get on this tier list, in, like the middle of C tier. So, I've already, like, checked this out, and the 33. Sorry, not the 331. The 333 is the most neutral train on this tier list. It is, like, okay, so the seats, they don't have tables. It's 3 plus 2, but the seats are reasonably comfortable. There's no first class for catering, but they look really new because they've got, like, rectangular ribbon windows, rectangular doors and windows. They've got, um, also the ends look quite nice as well. Uh, they've got, like, one toilet per train set. It's just a d neutral train. Uh, yeah. Uh, anything to say? Curiosity. Out of curiosity, do you prefer 3x2 or 2x2 two two seating? Sorry, what? Do you prefer 3x2 three two or 2x2 two two seating? The 333 three has got 3x2 seating, yes. Oh, which one do you prefer? Well, if you're only doing, like, short journeys, like, say, uh, London to Gravesend by Bexley Heath, uh, you could get away with 3 plus 2 in standard and say London to Bexley Heath you can get away with 3 plus 2 in first but generally if you're not using 3 plus 2 in those cases you should be using 2 plus 2 either like compact like say in standard class of London to Bexley Heath or like first class of between London and terminals but if not that then it should be regular 2 plus 2 for like any other case there's just not too many cases that you'd need 3 plus 2. So yeah, generally I prefer 2 plus 2. Uh, other than that, do you have anything else to say? Uh, no. Right, in that case, we've got the 377 slash 6 and slash 7 by Southern, which go below the 387 in F tier. So they re even the displays on this one as well look really, really old. They look quite old, older than the other 377s. I think the slash 6 is single voltage as well, and the slash 7 is like dual voltage. They've got two toilets per unit, and they do have ironing board seats, but much like the 387, they've actually got uh, tables throughout. Uh, the thing is, the first class is the exact same as standard class, so... And also, it's like weirdly put at the end of the... Wait, the point in, what's the point in that, then? I don't know. Uh, Why think... would you make first class identical to standard class? That's just scamming someone. I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat here and say to make the point that first class is not needed because like, no one's going to buy it, obviously. Unless, of course, if you're going for like private cabin illusion, then I guess. But like, it shouldn't be costing like two to three times the price. It should be like a small upgrade. And in that case, it's not even first class. It's more like standard plus or standard premium. Uh, even standard premium is a nice name, but standard plus is yeah more appropriate. Uh, but yeah, do you have any? Do you actually have anything else to say? No. Right. Okay. So we're gonna head off with the three seven five slash nine, which is ranked separately from the other three seven fives. I think it's gonna go in the bottom of A tier. No, no, that's the wrong 375. My bad. My bad. That's for later in the video. This 375 is going to the bottom of the A tier. Now, mind you, the 375 slash 9 uh, probably shouldn't be working on journeys like London, Charing Cross to Hastings and Dover Priory, but it's basically the textbook demonstration of a middle suburban train. It looks really new as well. The livery is quite nice. Um, rectangular ribbon windows and doors and windows um, the seating in standard is 3 plus 2 with tray tables at every airline style seat and fixed tables the width of a seat at base uh, the same principle applies in first class except instead of 3 plus 2 it's 2 plus 2 um, but yeah they, they, they got rid of first class now so yeah uh, back when it was still around it would have been like that um, but the 375... Mm. Uh, do you have anything to say, Matcha? 
375. 375 slash 9, so the one with 3 plus 2 seats. Honestly... It's meh, really. I don't have so much for me to say about it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, next up, oh, oh my goodness me. <sighs> right, so, next up, we have got the Class 376. Cute here. Like, I'm going to let Matcha talk first on the 376, so what do you think of it? Disgusting. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Once, there were two trains that yeah. I, I could get on. Yeah. One of them was one of them was delayed, so the next one was only like two minutes later. Yeah. So I purposely missed the first train because it was 376. Yeah. Turned out the next train was a 376. Oh my goodness me. Like, the 376. And, yeah. Which, you can tell that I do not enjoy 376s. Oh. They have horrible ironing board seats. <laughs> yeah. And this, and this ugly yellow livery. I just hate them so much. <laughs> I'm not actually crying right now, but like... I've actually got my head against the desk because the 376, there's so many things bad with it, but there's like... They're like the worst possible trains that can still be, in, that still have a hope of improving. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about all the bad things about the 376, right? So they were made like a decade before the 700 and had ironing board seats, but no one coined them as such. And I think they're more uncomfortable than the quote-unquote ironing board seats. They're, they these are a lot worse. Like at least they have like these, they have like these horrible metal bars in the middle oh, of yeah. your head. Ugh. Yeah, like the uh, but, uh, like also, like why? I I'm not actually even going to comment on the doors they have because they are appropriate for inner suburban. Uh, but like, there's no air it's conditioning. Like there's no air conditioning, no first class, no, no catering, but yeah, no toilets is which really gets me. Like, uh, the 376... It's that abandoned the trains in the Lewisham train stranding. Yes, like, I'm actually going to show you guys, like, the Lewisham train strandings here. And South Eastern just called the... the I love what South Eastern responded. So, Obviously what they responded, in my opinion, not right, but Lewis it's kind of funny how they responded. Lewisham train standings occurred on the 2nd of March 2018. 11 trains oh. involved, and one of the main culprits was that 376 blocking the entire junction. Now, uh, it's well, actually it's reported... It says here that there were four injuries reported, um, but I'm trying to, like, find out uh, like, so basically, Southeastern called the uh, passengers trespassers, and then like, Rail Magazine absolutely based criticised them for swearing in a tweet to like, a, a, in a query, yeah, and then like, yeah, it's. I'm disappointed that you have to worry. I'm disappointed by Southeastern. Yeah, so guys, if pause the video right now if you want to read the full detail, or just like search it up, which is right here, this link. If you copy this link, it will take you there. But basically... I would love for my main operator to be something like Southwestern or something like that. Like, the 376. Like, so, yeah, I've already discussed all the issues, but there's no tables either, right? Um, so, like, the number of mods you would need to do to it is add end gangways, change the livery to first, uh, to first capital connect urban lights, but with blue instead of purple, and with, uh, light blue doors instead of pink. You would need to, uh, change the seats away from those ironing boards and close to that of the 707, but add a bit more cushioning, and add tray tables at every airline style seat. And then first class should be the first half of the first coach, 3 plus 2, like the 375 slash 9, basically. And, like, child imports, there should also be, like, a vending machine as well, I think. Yes, a vending machine 
Uh, and there should also be one wheelchair accessible toilet in the middle. And then, uh, did I say it gangways? Yeah. yeah. What does 376's accessibility look like? So, they're at the cab ends, um, and the fold, that's where the fold-out seats are. Um, if there's no wheelchair user there, um, yeah. So, the wheelchair space is two at either end of the train. Uh, but I really, really hate the 376, but at least it can be improved upon. Also, quickly In noting, uh, X tier is full. What are you going to say, Metro? My opinion, the 376 is the worst possible train that can still be improved. I mean, I slightly disagree with that. I, I would say realistically, but still actually improved. Like, the second worst overall, because, like, the 455, which we legit spent, like, ten, like, about half an hour yesterday, like, figuring out where it should go. No. We had to push it at the end. Yeah. Right, so, are we all done with the 376? Yeah. Good riddance. Right, and then we've and got... let's never talk about it again. Hopefully. Anyway, we've got the 395, which I have decided okay. is going to go in the lower end of S tier. Uh, do you have anything it's to say? It's one of the best trains. One of the best trains that Southeastern uses. Yep, agreed. Uh, anything and else? And it, it's an example of a good Hitachi Rail train. Yes. Not the best at the O3, but good. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it have is very unique. Like, it, if you've seen on one of my comments on one of Dylan's train spotting videos, I, I said that it was unique. This, but it was made, but it's used to serve a very specific purpose. Which is? And it serves that purpose really well. Oh yeah, HS1. Now, my yeah. opinions on it, it can be improved with a bit of modding, and that does not include end gangways. Most, pretty much all of these trains can be improved with a bit of modding, but uh, with the 395... Aside, aside from a few. Uh, yeah, like, it's got two plus two seats standard throughout with tables at every seat. It's got no first class or catering, but it's got a fair number Lacking of toilets. Uh, but That's it's, good. Yeah, the livery is quite nice as well. It looks quite sleek and modern, even with all the roundedness. It just looks modern, I guess. It uses it uses Southeastern's dark blue livery, which, in my opinion, is their best livery. Yeah, and that's where the three seven five's livery was inspired from. Now, I think the three seven five's got a better livery, but this is Southeastern's flagship train, and it's completely understandable why because it's got those single leaf doors. Um, this, yeah, and this... the 707 uses, also uses a dark blue livery. Yeah, but it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we'll get to the 707 a bit later because it's just not particularly the best, but it's definitely better than the 376. But yeah, uh, also about Southeastern in itself, like, they have one of the l lowest rates of cancellations and delays in the UK, and it's also government-owned. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our southeastern, southwestern, southern, northwestern, northeastern, and northern all government owned. They were what? Are they government all... owned. Southwestern is franchised, northwestern's franchised, northern is government owned. Uh, so, so what are you saying? I'll pause you at each one. Southern. Southern's all Southern's owned by GTR, so go via Thameswick Railway. Uh, all might actually be better than Southeastern for liability, though. Uh, Southwestern is, is there... uh, franchised. Uh, what are you going to say? There, is there an Eastern? Is there an Eastern Railway? That's Greater Anglia or C two C, but no, no. Is there a Western Railway? Great Western Railway and <laughs> Southwestern Railway, yes. Oh yeah, and also and Northwestern then, Railway and West Midlands Railway. There are Northeastern Railway. Uh, London Northeastern Railway, yes, L N E R. Yeah. Uh, so is that all done with for the three nine five then? Yeah. Right. Next up, 
we have got the 465. Well, actually, we've got the 465 slash 0, slash 1, and slash 2, and the 466, which all go... They're all... Yeah, they're all grouped together into the B tier. B tier above the other network is because these are an electric version um and within yeah. the 465 yeah, the uh mm, yeah well kind of the 365 got scrapped the, slash nine, the, slash nine. the free yeah the 365 got scrapped so i'm not ranking them here that might actually be the best network of the 365 but it's not well why were they scrapped because successes but seriously Again, why weren't these scrapped? These. Ugh. Horrible. But, yeah. Like, the 465 within, I would say, um, from worst to best, 465 slash 0, then 465 slash 1, then 465 slash 2, then the 466. And I think the door controls in the 466 just look quite cool. Um, for some reason as well, the 466 smells a bit quirky. Um, another thing as well, the 466 has got like weird like poles, which I quite like, it's like weird. There's quite a lot of quirky things about the 466, like the sound, and another thing, um, it's still got the old toilet, which is like, uh, in one of the driving, it's in driving Downgrade. trailer. Yeah, it's not, it's, the, the new accessible ones are better, but still having that old one is quite quirky and fun, to be fair. I personally rather poop myself and go in one of those toilets though yeah yeah definitely that that's just me in public as well in general because like i need a b yeah. day and this and then doesn't have to now four six five slash nine so you're done with the four six five um i, I think i might not yeah. be done yet though i think i need to like all right like the livery is quite good i know uh, southeastern's other livery is quite good but it's better though it's got three plus two, reasonably comfortable, but no tables, um, and like, yeah, it's got those, no catering, no first class, uh, it's got one toilet per set, um, South Eastern is operated quite good, uh, but yeah, that's about it, and then next up we have got the 465 slash 9, which actually scores into the A tier. Now, the 465 slash 9 can really be described in one of two ways, but I'll let Matcha talk first about it. Is he just the 465 the best, in my opinion? Yeah. So, the 465 slash 9 can either be described as a 465, but with yellow furnishings, or sorry, yeah, with yellow furnishings, and first class at either rent, which is uh, two plus two with tray tables at airline style seats, and a full and a table the width of a a fixed table the width of a seat at bays, and then with like improved windows and doors as well. Or it can be described as a class three seven five slash nine with a four six five delivery. Oh, sorry, yeah, or a four Honestly, six. I think. All well, southeastern trains, yeah. in my opinion, should have the same livery. Kind of. I think they should have, um, they should have for a slight version. Metro in the suburban and middle suburban should use the first Capital Connect urban light livery, but instead of purple base, you use southeastern corporate blue, with instead of like neon pink for the lights, you have light blue and then like light blue doors instead of pink doors, and then for like outer suburban and main line. You use the um, first Great Western Dynamic Lines livery on the 166, but instead of purple base, you use blue base. Instead of pink doors, you use light blue doors. And instead of pink neon lines, you've got light blue neon lines. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Now, the 465, again, the other way I was describing it, basically, well, no, that, it's not, it's just a lot harder to describe it the other way. So, yeah, as I've said, 465 slash 9. Uh, you stuff first class, but they got rid of it. They've got no catering, no tables. Um, but yeah, it is it is better. Um, so yeah, just a four six five, just a four six five with yellow furnishings and two plus two first class at either end with uh, tray tables and on some seats and a fixed table that went for a seat at bays. 
So do you have anything else to talk about the um, 465? Uh, no, I don't. Right, without further ado Next then, one. one shall head over to the class 707 by Southeastern. Goes into the top of Q tier. Now, the, the 707 is basically a 376. That looks a bit nicer, looks a bit newer. More modern. Yes. Look, is in... The technology is much more modern. And I love the Siemens acceleration sounds. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the 707's got no first class, no catering, no toilets, but it's air conditioned, it's got charging ports. It's looks quite new, the livery's quite nice. It's run by Southeastern. Uh, I take the 707 fairly frequently now. It's pretty good for the journeys it does. Uh, but mainly because Which I like... Which class... Do you say? Which class was the... That you said had the very weird acceleration sound? Oh, that's a 323, which is coming uh, before all the S-plus trains. I'm going to listen to it now. What? Do you want to... Um, listen to it now. Um... I'll, we'll listen to it when we like. No, we can't because of like reasons. It's like copyright, so I can't really do that. Um, not on not on recording anyway. Uh, so yeah, anything else to say about the seven oh seven? Not particularly. Just no. a very overrated class. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you do need quite a fair bit of modding to make it a good train, but not as much modding as the three seven six. Uh, is that all then? Mm -hmm. Right, so next up is the Scott Rail Class 158, which is going to be in the um, higher end. Not there. Of A tier, I think. There, there we go. Now, the Class 158 by Scott Rail has got. A really good operator, you got Scott Rowe. It's also got two plus two seating with tables at every seat. Now there is no first class or catering, but it's got a fair number of toilets. Um, it's quite nice, quite comfortable inside. Uh, when travelling on like jointed track of the far north line, it sounds amazing. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's got good livery, but do you have anything else to say? Nope. Right, so in that case, um, we are going to rank the next train, which is going to be the, um, not the 170, because that's like an S+, plus, isn't it? Um, if you remember from yesterday, mm -hmm. don't you? Yeah, no, not the 170. Yeah. It's the really, really weird 334, which is going to go here. Now, it's basically... A it's hard to describe. It's like a seven oh s a crossover between the seven oh seven and the three seven six. It looks quite old, but it's got a fair livery. It's got two plus two seating with no tables, but not ironing boards, mind you. Uh, does it have a toilet? I need to check my notes. It's a three three four. Uh, it looks incredible. The windows and doors look really old on it. Yes. They do have toilets, though, to be fair. And also, Scott Rail's a really good operator. But do you have anything else to add, Matcha? Uh, no. Right, so... In that case, we have got the Scott Rail Class 380. Another quite weird one. Bottom of D tier. Now, the Class 380... Yeah, it's, it has that weird slanting on it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. The 380, like... It does look quite modern. I think it looks a bit modern than other Siemens Desiro trains like the 350 because of like its design. It looks a bit more modern. Um, As the square shaped windows and the doors. I'm not sure if they're square shaped windows, Matcha, but uh, the doors. Re I mean rectangular. Rectangular. No, not rectangular either. I think they're rounded, but not like much like other Siemens Desiro trains. But I, I know that like the doors are rectangular. Now the seats are fine, they're 2 plus 2, they might have tray tables, but they don't have four fixed tables. 
They do have trace hailing, I believe. Yeah, they're, they're reasonable trains. Uh, they're also run by Scott Rouse, so it's quite the good. Cables are quite stubby, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, run by Scott Rowe. They've got no first class or catering. They do have toilets, but it's just generally quite a mid train with a few bad things. But it, it could be modded with relative ease to make it a good train. Now. Good uh, detail. Yeah. Anything else do you want to say, Matt Charles? That here. That's everything. Right. Now, next up, we have got the Class 385, which you wouldn't believe uh, who manufactured this. But it's actually going who? to go... Who is it? Who? 385. Do you want to guess who... It's actually. Yeah, actually. How did you get Hitachi? that? No, no I was just, I'm just looking at this online. Oh. Cheetah. But anyway. no, that is not Hitachi at all. But, also because it's like a really good train as well. Now the three eight five. It does look good. Um, right. So standard got rail cars. They they do have. Uh, sorry, they've got no catering. They do have toilets and they do have a first class. Now the standard class seats. Um, they are ironing boards, but at least it's two plus two and you've got tables at every seat. So it's really quite good. And then like. For the um, first class, you've got two plus one reclining leather seats with uh, tables at every seat. So you've got reading lights and blinds at every seat as well. And they don't, three eight fives don't have the same reliability issues as the other Hitachi trains. So they're also like operated by Scott Row too. So that, again, really quite good trains. Uh, I really like them. Uh, do you have anything to say about that though, Matcha? Uh, no. Is the class four eight? I was wondering, is the class four eight three on your list? Four eight three, is that the one that's on the island line? Yeah, it's the one that used to be on Northern Line. No, because I don't really like ranking. Like, it's kind of like an underground train. It doesn't really fill this tier list. I mean, it, it was used on the Southwestern though. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't. It, I like how like old. I like how old it feels though. Yeah, it's understandable. Anyways, um, next up, which I'm going to be skipping quite a few trains because Southwestern's rolling stock is that good. But in any case, next available train that I can rank is the Southwestern Railway Class Four Fifty Siemens Desiro, which is going to net itself into oh it has that it has that yellow blue and red livery yeah it nets itself into the lower end of eight here i prefer the gray i prefer the gray livery on southwestern yeah yeah I'm, i actually agree with you yeah um the seating um i'll get to that in a moment right so the, do you have anything to say about the 450 match okay uh the of course, the grey livery on the 450 looks much nicer yeah. than the blue livery does. And then, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, right. let's, do, let's, look, let's look at its interior. <laughs> the, the interior looks like ironing boards. Oh yeah, I'll get to that in a moment. Also, in my notes, I'm reading up the 450, and it's going to the 345. But yeah, do you have anything else about the 450? Um, so the interior. Yeah. Right. So the class 450, um, it looks quite new despite having like rounded windows, but it's got like rectangular doors. Um, the end gangway is also really nice on the 450 as well. They look quite good. The thing is, though, they don't have a they don't have catering, and the standard class is three plus two, with um, ironing boards. Yes, uh, well, not necessarily ironing board level, but just like not the most comfortable, and it's got tray tables at every yeah. airline style seat. Bays they don't have full width fixed tables. Whether they've got any table is something I don't know the answer to. But they've got a fair number of charging ports. Yeah. But, but, Quite good in that regard. But the first class on the 450 looks amazing. Ooh. Like le leather seats. I think not the ama Maxi Not amazing, Miracle. but it looks quite nice. Yeah. It's, the first class definitely an improvement from standard class. 
Yeah, two plus two leather reclining seats with charging ports, including airless, including wireless air charge. But they got curtains as well. But we got to remember these trains are being used on duties up to two hours forty five minutes in length. So basically, London Waterloo to Paul. Now, thing. mind you, uh, I'm just going to quickly say that like the. Uh, the 450 running to Paul, any point beyond roughly Southampton has got regular 444 service anyway. But I would say the, that London to Ports of Harbour is certainly not a short journey at, um, yeah. yeah, about two hours long. And it's using those trains. Like, I don't really agree with it, in my opinion. It's not. They're, they're not fit for Which those journeys. They, they're great trains, but they're not fit for that journey. Um, Which class is this? 450. Yeah, well, why is it using a two-hour, near three-hour journey? My real question is, why do not why do they use those instead of the 458 slash 4? Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to add anything to that, Matcha? Or are you, like, all good now? I'm good. Let's continue. Right. The troublesome one. The class 455. Now... Oh, no. We, this... I, I, I we think... eventually ended up putting this at the bottom of Q tier. Yeah. And the reason for that is basically because... First, it's quite old. But the main reason is the end gangways. Now, yeah. Like, yeah. the southern 455 would be an X tier because... They don't have an end gangway, but the Southwestern Railway 455 do have end gangways, and they do make good use of them. They've got two plus two, not necessarily ironing board seats, but just compact two plus two seating with no tables, no catering, no first class, and no toilets. But basically needs substantial modding to make it a good train. Yeah, like they're, a they're going to they're going to be replaced very soon. Yeah, in the next two years, roughly. Um, a seven, a seven o one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on point, Big. Yeah. Um. Right. You done? The seat. I feel like it. If it were a much more recent class. Yeah. You know, definitely going X to it. Yes. Yes. It has an excuse. Yeah, he's faring well. Not to be honest. Right, so is that all? We're all done with the 455? So now... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I will say though, like, the livery is quite nice. Um, but, and also like, the operator so... Southwestern Railway is reasonable. But the next train is the Class 45A, which is... Um, not actually on like my notes. I'm doing this entirely from experience. So I'm going to Great. rank the four five eight slash five first. Um this the interior. The lower end of A tier, I think. So like um here roughly. It looks like yeah, because is the four five eight slash five the one with the blue livery? Yes, this is a four five eight slash five. Now the four five eight slash five. Uh, are you got any thoughts on that? The what are the seats like? Right. So let me describe the full interior to you. There is no first class or catering, but I think they've got like one to, to three toilets per set. They've got two plus two seating with tray tables at every airline style seat, and uh, I don't think they've got tables at base, but there's first class at either That's end. Um, yeah, they've got first class at either end, um, which has been declassified since with two plus two, basically standard class, but a bit more comfortable, and it's got four width fixed tables at the base, so yeah, they've, they've, they're the best commuter trains, that's for sure, until the slash four came in. Um, now we have the, the slash four, which is basically a coach shorter than the slash five variant. Net looks itself. very nice though. Um, am, am, I, am I even ranking that properly? 
No, I'm not. It's in the tier above. In front of the 395, I think? Yes, just above. Now, these have got 2 plus 2 new, fresh, modern seating with tables at every seat. And then the first class is like that of the 450, which is reclining leather first class seats with like wireless charging, uh, leather, uh, like, uh, leather and like uh, curtains as well. So they are quite, they're, they're definitely nice trains. For some reason they're used on commuter journeys rather than like the London to Portsmouth journeys, which I don't get. If you're travelling first class it doesn't matter that much, but if you're stand travelling standard it's very notable. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that Matt Char? Uh, personally no. I think... Yeah. I agree. It's, it's just... Yeah, it's... It's just... Why would they do that? I, I think it's more South Western Railway fault this time than the DFT because they actually got to the point of upgrading the trains. So, yeah. It's really quite questionable in that regard. You done? Yep. Right, in any I, case, I go on to 484 now. No. We ha yeah, the 701, which I have decided is nowhere near where I'm hovering my mouse cursor right now. It's actually going into the B tier. I uh, just behind 701. the 720, yeah, the 701. Now the 701 has got uh charging ports at every seat. It's got one toilet every five coaches. Um it's air conditioned. It's got good climate control. Um even I've got like the rounded design it looks relatively new. And um, at the base, uh, they've got a fixed table, the side, the width of a seat. Now, Matcha, do you have any opinions on the 701? It just feels like a slight, uh, like a better version of the 700. Yeah, agreed. And the seats aren't necessarily ironing boards, but they're not ideal. But for the short journey they do, I think they're very well justified. But is that all? What tier have you put them in? I put the seven and one What's... middle of B tier. Okay, so so it's in the good half. Yeah. And now we have got the class one fifty by TFW, which So we finished Southwestern. Um yeah. Well, excluding not like, the S plus trains, but the one fifty nets itself into the middle of A tier behind the 168 now TFW is like absolutely killed it with the interior refurbishment where is TFW? it's like absolutely amazing the refurbishment it's got 2 plus 2 seating throughout with tables every seat it's got 1 toilet per 2 coach train it's yeah just infer refurbished very very well uh, do you have any opinions on where that? where is the tfw transport for wales okay no. personally i do not have any opinion yeah like they don't have catering or first class but the operator is really really good they're not actually affected by strike action and the livery is quite nice as well so i, I really like the tfw 150. um but is that all for the 150? Yeah, so what's the next TFW class? In any case, the 158, which is the second best train in A tier. Now, um, quickly, do you have the any... The 158? Thoughts? Yes, the 158 by TFW. What's the, between, what's the difference between that and the Express Sprinter? The 158 is the Express Sprinter. But is there any difference between the TFW 158 and the Southwestern 158? Uh, yeah, um, I'll get to that later. Well, actually, 158... By T by one five eight by Southwestern Railway is two class and every other one five eight is standard only. But do you have any thoughts on the one five eight by TFW? Personally, no. Right, I'm just going to say, um, they've got the moquette of TFW and they're just a carbon copy of the Scott Rail one five eight, pretty much. No catering, no first class, but two plus two with uh quite comfortable tables every seat. Yeah, that's pretty much it, and. Uh, we done with it? Yep. 
So then, in any mm. case, is the class one nine seven by Transport for Ra for Wales, which next itself into the S tier here. Now, um, I don't. Well, the class one nine seven. Yeah. Is it looks very the the exterior looks very modern. Yeah, I agree. It is a very modern looking train. Uh, but, I mean, it is quite it is quite a modern train. Yeah, it is. especially for diesel. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, any other thoughts? For only it's only existed for four years. Yeah, yeah you're right. However, the round, the rounded windows do give don't actually affect like how it looks. Yeah, for some reason, one nine seven just looks quite new. I think it's partially because of TFW's livery. It is new. Yeah, with like the white and red. Yes. Now, um, I do have to. That's why I have is in Landers No Junction. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on 197? Uh, personally, no. Right. In which case, I'll talk about how... Right, so um, most trains of the 197 are standard only. Two plus two with tables at every seat. It's got one toilet for every two coaches, rounded up. So a three-coach train has two toilets. Um, they do have catering as well. Um... Yeah, the seats are quite comfortable. Uh, the train's quite good as well. TFW, the operator, is very good. Doesn't have um, industrial action. But the, some of the free coach trains actually have a first class section, which is branded, I think, like standard premium at, in the first half of the first coach, which has two plus one reclining seats, which might be leather, but they might not be. I think, yeah, you don't get like complimentary beverages or stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the yeah uh, standard premium class. It's quite comfortable, quite quaint. Um, uh, I'll check to see in my notes if there's any other um, a fixed table every seat as well. Um, a step up from other trains in Wales. Uh, any other thoughts on the one nine seven? And uh, no. Right, the class seven hundred. Kate here. Emsling. Yes. It's basically just the 707 but better, I guess. Yeah. So it's the 707, but instead of five coaches long, it is eight or 12 coaches long. It's got tray tables at every seat. And then the first half of each end of the train. Oh, sorry, not the first half. The first two thirds is first class, which is a lower density 2 plus 2 with like forward fixed tables as well and then you've got like toilets so I think it's like 3 for an 8 coach train and 5 for a 12 coach train um the not are there any variants of the 700 there what are there any variations of the class 700 um other than a subclasses there's got two subclasses, eight coaches and twelve coaches, and that's pretty much it. Alright. So, I'll just check to see if there are any other things I might want to discuss. Oh yeah, the livery is not that good. There's no catering. Um, yeah, they do have toilets, they do have first class. They do have those infamous ironing board seats, so, but, again, not as bad as the class 376. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Um, no. Right. Then we've got TPE. And TPE in this regard is actually really hard to like find trains to list because basically all their trains are amazing. So we actually skip the first two TPE trains and head to the class 802. Now, much like the whole train's class 802, it is not ending itself up in the um uh, finding it in my notes there we go it's not ending itself up in the um x tier but i think it's roughly s tier i forgot um the i think it's like very very similar so the one the 800 um actually a bit higher it goes above the 197 now i really do like it is quite a fairly good train now 
running through the checklist. Right, so the train is quite good. Uh, the livery is amazing. TP livery is like the best. Um, it's got good catering as well because it's Transpennine Express. That's what TP stands for. Um, now the seats, you've got 2 plus 2 with tables every seat in standard. 2 plus 1 reclining in first class with fixed tables at every seat. Um, it is really quite a good train. I quite like this. It's the best 802 you're going to get. But overall, yeah, the 802, quite a good train. Do you have any thoughts on the class 802? Uh, no, I don't. Right. In I probably, any... won't able to... yeah. I probably won't be able to talk that much anymore. Oh, how come? Right. In any case, we shall move on to the class 139 Q tier. Because it's got like bench style seat. It's basically like a 345 but quite old no air conditioning and just extremely tiny it's weird it's quirky but it's, yeah I, I i will check to see if there's anything else to note if match has got anything to say then i don't yeah no catering no first class no toilets um no tables but so, is he just lacking does it have iron board seats though? Maybe, maybe. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but they run like two miles total distance, so it's kind of got a pass actually. It's literally so they they have an ex they have an excuse to have iron board seats. And whether or not they've got an excuse for toilets, probably, yeah. Um. Yeah. Now, uh, and without further ado, we're going to head on to one of the last three trains before the S tier, which is going to be the Class 172 heading into the bottom end of K tier. Now, the Class 172 is a, well, it's another one of the Turbo Stars, but it's got like an urban interior. Uh, Matcha, what do you think of that? So a turbo star but with an urban interior is a very interesting idea. So like um a class seven oh seven interior, roughly, roughly. I do like the in aside from the iron board seats, I do love the interior of the seven oh seven. Agreed. Yeah, it's based the West Midlands Railway livery is really good because it's got orange and purple now. Indeed the class one seven two uh, there's no catering, no first class, but there are toilets. Uh, there's no tables on the 2 plus 2 seats. Uh, yeah. So, you got anything else to say? Uh, nope. How about you? Do you have anything else to say? Uh, I don't think so, actually. I mean, other than the fact that these Turbo Stars look like Electro Stars because of their end gangways, it's quite weird. I mean, they're more like Diesel Stars, then. <laughs> well... No, well, yeah, yeah, they're electro stars, but like if they were like DMU, but it doesn't make sense. Basically, they're more known for electro stars if it was diesel than turbo star. Unint yeah, diesel stars, mm. unintended. Now, the class 196 is the next train, second to last train in the tier list. Uh, before, before we get we to get like, to good one. yes, now, uh. If I can even locate this train, which would be really nice. Right, so it is going to score itself into the... Huh. Have we not even featured this train yet? Share is it? Class 196, West Midlands... Oh, hang on there. A tier, I didn't even see it. Right, so A tier is now full up. No, hang on. Yeah, A tier is full up. Uh, now... The class 196, again with the orange and purple, uh, there's no catering or first class, but you've got two plus two seats throughout, with tables at every seat. But Matcha, there's one yeah. thing which you might really dislike about it. There's no armrests on any of the class 196 oh, seats. Oh, I hate, I hate when they don't have armrests. And this is like a mainline train, I mean, 
look, I'd be very overjoyed if this was on my local line, but also, like, I always fight over with whoever's sitting next to me with the middle armrest, so yeah. if, if there's no armrest there, I'm not... Ow, too... how did I miss her? I... Sorry, I was... Yeah, there's no catering or first class, but there are toilets. It's quite a reasonable train, to be honest. I quite like it. The livery's good. Train operating company's good. Train itself is good. Any other thoughts? Uh, no. So, I think we should continue. Yes, without further ado, the class 323, which is destined for the middle of B tier, just above the 465. Now... The 323, it's a 323 one of the hydraulic, the really weird hydraulic sound. Yeah, but it no sorry. When I say that, it's an electric multiple unit, so it's not going to be hydraulic transmission. But it's the one oh, with the really which, weird which sound. That, which, which one's the one with the sound that you played earlier? I think that the was the so three two three actually, but that's a, that's not a hydraulic it, transmission. It, no, it was, an, it was a hydraulic one. It began with like a two, I think. Um, Crossing over I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Matcha. I, I don't know. But, yeah, it's uh, the 323 is the electric one. And I put it above the 465 because it basically is a 465 just with a nice delivery. Looks a little bit nicer and it sounds better. Not not, not above the 465 slash 9, but above the regular 465. Oh, yeah. The slash zero and slash one and slash two. Yeah, no first class, no catering. Seats, ba it's basically a carbon copy of the four six five, except it looks a bit nicer. I mean, it even shares like the same five. door controls as well. Does the slash nine have first class? Yeah. But Is that not... why it's? Yes, because first class. Oh. Basically, hang on. What is first the highest? The highest single tier train, or sorry, the highest single class train, I believe, is the class 375. But it used to have first class. The highest train with no first class intended is the 803. So, if you've got any other thoughts on the 323, suddenly I do not. Right, now onto the really fun part of the video where I start waxing lyrical about trains for no reason. 377, yeah. S plus tier. So, the 377, yeah. do you have any thoughts on it first? I'll let you begin because it, I don't particularly know the difference between the 377 and 375. Right, so the 377. So, subclasses 1 through to 4 are operated by Southern, and subclass 5 is operated by Southeastern but has a Southern interior. So, the liveries on both are amazing. The interiors are really good as well. Uh, they don't have catering, but they do have a fair number of toilets, and they do have first class. So, um, first class, right, hang on, it's hard to describe, so like. Basically, standard class either features three plus two with tray tables at airline style seats and a basically um, different parts. So, right, um, matcha. So, uh, yeah. with Southeastern's three seven sevens, the middle two coaches have standard class equivalent to that of the three seven five slash nine, if you know what I mean, but in southern maquette. And then mm -hmm. the uh, first and last coach have two plus two with tables at every seat, but in a southern maquette. And then uh, yes. those are unrefurbished, so the only charge imports are in X first class. So it used to be declassified first class, basically. That's the only place there's charge imports on the southeastern 377 slash 5. Now, I think some southern ah. 377s are like that, but some may have like two plus two throughout, or some may have. 3 plus 2 throughout, except in first class and in, like, the, uh, like, the non-cab ends of, like, the, the, it's weird, like, they've got varying proportions of 3 plus 2 and 2 plus 2. So that's the 377C, that's just the 377 in a nutshell, kind of. Okay. It's a really good train, really good operators. Uh, do you have any thoughts on, like, the 377 at all? I don't know. Right. So, next up, 
we so have... Are these all S++++++? Plus 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 yes, plus? yes. And then we've got the 444, which is in going to go into the S plus tier. Right, so the 444, uh, let me know if you've got any faults initially. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any faults? 444, better Siemens train. Yes. Yes. Compared to their, compared to their 7 series, oh, as I yeah. like sports. Mm. Uh, 700, 707, and 717. Uh, yeah, they're not particularly good. Uh, but I, I will say the 444 has got no catering, but it's got like four to five toilets on the train. It's got, um, right, so it's got those doors on like either end of the coach. It's really good. I, this is like the perfect type of door I'd use for an intercity train. Uh, and the first half of the first coach is first class with two plus two leather reclining seats with tables at every seat and air charger um, bays and then like the standard class is 2 plus 2 comfortable tables at every seat um this i just said no catering but there is first class there are toilets delivery is quite nice the operator is quite good the train's really good uh, do you have any thoughts on the 444 um i love the it, this will sound really stupid, but yeah. I love the doors. <laughs> Bro, that's not stupid. That's literally what I think. I really love the doors. The on doors the four, four, four. on the 404 are some of the best train doors ever. Exactly, Matcha. I agree like, with why'd you. you... No need to have double doors. Just have a wide single door. Well, for intercity trains, yes. Like, you know, like the, 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 like, the lesser trains, like, I understand, like, double doors. But seriously, like... Why does say these rubbish trains in like X tier have like these single doors? Like, why those? You when you can have like the four 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 sliding plug doors? Those are absolutely phenomenal, aren't they, Matcha? Hundred percent agree. It's not stupid. It's what I think. This is a comfortable environment yes. where we can talk about this sort of thing. So, should we wrap it up? Yeah. Right. Three seven so five. What's next? Other subclasses. Okay. S plus now, um, all three seven fives of this form. Uh, if I go and reread my notes, they all have right in standard class. Well, they've all got two plus two seating with tables at every seat. They don't have first class or catering, or they've got the little declassified first class bit, which is basically the same as standard class. And it's yeah. Uh, I'll get through the details of each subclass and where I'd put them. I hate when operators do that. Declassify first class. No, not declassify first class, but just make first class the same as standard class. Yeah. There's, there's no point. Uh, the main just... bit, I'm going to start ranking all the different subclasses in this category. So the, my least favourite is the 375-7. There's nothing notable about it. And then, like, the 375 slash 8 has got, like, the cab ends are really weird. Instead of, like, the full width fixed table, you've got, like, those stubby tables. But the interesting thing about the... Uh, I don't like those stubby tables. Those are disgusting. They're, they're only at the cab ends. So there's only, like, four bays in the entire train that are like that. But I'm, I'll quickly say those are, like, the perfect demonstration of, like, what standard class should be on an outer suburban train. So like a train London to Gillingham, that that the standard class should be like that, in my opinion. Now the slash three is only three coaches. The declassified first class is at cab end. Um, but other than that, yeah. And then like you've got the three seven five slash six now, matcher the three seven five slash six I absolutely love even more than regular three seven five, and the reason why is because it's. Whilst the other 375, the single voltage, can only work on the third rail, the 375-6 can work on the overhead system as well. But if it, if the regular 375 can only work on the third rail, then wouldn't it be a 4? Well, that's the same with the 376, but because they have like an overhead or dual voltage family, I think that's why they've got a 3. It's a bit like how the... 465 has no overhead or dual voltage counterparts, but the the 450 is weird. I don't get why they've got like different numbers and the electro stars are all the same. I think it's because like 
even then, like the, some of the 350s are dual voltage as well, so it's a good question. I don't understand. Now, uh, yeah, I, I double check the 375. Yeah, the seats are really good. Operator's great. Livery's great. No catering. No first class now. But any other additional thoughts you have? Uh, no, personally. Right now, personal experience kicks in. The class 171. S plus the 171 has basically a class 170 but one of the cabins is first class and you get two plus one reclining seats with reading lights charging ports on a diesel train charging ports on a diesel train that's rare um yeah uh, charging ports on train on old trains can be rare though can be what yeah rare right. Yeah, and um, I've had the fortune of being in a Class 171's first class. It's brilliant. Uh, livery good. Operator's really quite good. I love the seats in the 171. Uh, there's no catering, but, like, this is a rare instance of, like, first class in the southern region not being the same as standard, and I respect them for it. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? No. Cool. Next up is a train you might have never actually heard of before. It's a class three seven nine. Which is going into S plus. Is that very similar to a class three seven seven? Yes, except the thing is it I think it's quite similar to the three eight seven, except it doesn't suck. Like it's got those rounded windows, but the way how it's got like the the livery just makes it look super modern. Also, like, the rectangular doors as well. Um, and the thing I love about the 379, the seats throughout are 2 plus 2 standard with tables every seat. There isn't catering, but the first class is 2 plus 1 reclining with, like, big armchairs, like, curtains. The reclining seats on train, that's cool. Yes, and it's, like, the first class is a proper first oh, class creeper. as well. Oh god, another creeper. Yes. Minecraft is featuring in this too. Yes. Yes. Me being horrible at the game. Mm-hmm. We not yeah, mentioned the one that. time I sumoed you even I gave you a five hit head start. Why are there so many creepers everywhere? They're being creeped out by how good trains can be, eh? No. Now, that 379, unfortunately, all of them are in long-term storage. So, you there are no active 379s today. Why? Because they, they cost too much money to lease. But there's a reason why they cost so much to lease. Because they're good trains. They're yes, good. You can't just... Don't just make a crappy train because it's cheap. Exactly. And now, but of course, there's but of course there's southeastern just being absolute idiots. Yeah, like of course the trains that I'm subject most to are the worst ones. That's why so many trains are so high up in the tier list because like, if I like got, the three seven six and the seven oh seven. Yeah, like if I'm being honest, I would be like other than like maybe the one fifty and the the one fifty the three seven. So the 357, the 360, other than like a few trains, like if I've got any trains above Q tier on my local line, I'd be overjoyed, especially the ones with pluses next to them. That's just brilliant. But yeah, uh, are you done with the... Um... Yeah. Right. In any case, we have got the class 158 and 159, both by Southwestern Railway. Both going in S plus tier. Um, for very similar reasons. The lag is surreal. What is going on? So I've got that, mm -hmm. and then the one five nine goes above the one five eight. Now, Southwestern Railway. Another instance where first class is different from standard class. I'll start off with the one five eight. Standard class, two plus two seating throughout with tables at every seat. Um, and the first class is two plus one reclining armchairs with charging ports at every seat as well 
And bear in mind, these trains are about like 30, 40 years old and got charging ports. These are really, really good trains, really comfortable. They ha have they had like charging ports retrofitted? Maybe, I think. But they also got curtains as well in first class. And yeah, they've got toilets. No catering, but still really good trains. The livery is really quite nice. The uh, operator SWR is quite good. Um, the first class seats are basically what I would want, like mainline first class to be like. So you like basically first class on like the one seventy and the uh, one five eight, all that sort of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love the one five eight and one five nine by Southwestern Railway. Do you have any additional thoughts on those trains at all? Uh, no, I don't. Right. Next up, we've got the one seventy for the final time by Scott Rail. Oh yes, I love. Scorer 170 is your favourite 170. Yes, easily, S plus tier. Now, the livery stunning. The operator stunning. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong notes. Hang on, where's the Scott Row 170? Scott Row is a good. There Scott we Rowe's go. Just a good operator. Livery stunning. Train stunning. Operator stunning. Seats absolutely amazing. Uh, they've even got catering on these 170s as well. And the livery is really quite good as well. Right, so you've got a good number of toilets. And then, like, you've got a trolley service throughout the train. And then first class has got, like, complimentary food. And then, like, mm -hmm. the first class seats are recline reclining 2 plus 1 with, like, armrests. And, like, I think they might have charging ports as well. They've got curtains, but they also got a lamp on these first class seats on the 170 as well. Really good. Do you have any thoughts on the 170? No. Right, cool. So. Because I don't have much personal experience on the 170s. Fair enough. I don't have experience on the 170s, but I do have experience on the 171. Quick fact the only difference between the two classes is that the 170 has got tight lock couplers and like can work in multiple, like 14X, 15X, like 16X as well. And the 171 has got downer couplers and they can be coupled to the class 377 in the event of an emergency yay so so the the, the 171 there's no difference in like passing and on board and experience to the passengers or even mechanical as a matter of fact it's just the coupler mm. right in any case we've got the 397 by tpe which is immediately going into the S plus tier. I think it's like the second to last train in S plus tier. Yes, it is. So the 397 is operated by Transpennine Express. It's got an amazing livery. The operator's yes. fair. The catering is quite good. Um, there's plenty of toilets. The standard is 2 plus 2 with tables throughout and good window alignment but there's one thing I love about the f the first class seats which is just basically perfect so you've got mixed uh, upholstery so you've got the perfect c combination of leather and fabric they recline the two plus one they've got armrest you get a table at every seat the they've got a lamp on the tables um I think there's curtains maybe and you've got, also got complimentary food and you've got um, a leather headrest as well, padded leather headrest. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and the window alignment's really good as well. They're basically like the perfect first class seats. I absolutely love the class three nine seven. Any thoughts on the three nine seven from what I've heard, or you've heard? Yeah. I. Uh, no. Oh, Thanks. fair enough. Uh, in which case we go to the last train before it gets. Kind of ridiculous when you talk about tiers in tier maker. The class 222 Meridian. The best of the S plus tier. Now, 222, the livery, whatever livery you look at it in, it's just amazing. Okay, fine. East Midlands Railway, all trains, livery, really good. The operator, really good. The train's just amazing. I really love it. You have a good number of toilets on these trains. The, two, the standard class seating, 2 plus 2 with tables at every seat. But the first class is quite notable. You get two plus one reclining leather armchairs with the armrests of movable and integrated into the seat. Either way, the headrest is winged. 
you get a full width fixed table at every single seat and you get curtains and I think charging ports too you get complimentary food and there's a buffet car as well god you, a buffet car why do train so many trains not have them most trains don't have them there's only like a few trains that do have them but in any case the ones that do rightfully so yes the 222s are absolutely phenomenal trains these are amazing they are the best diesel electric multiple units and are teetering on the edge of being an s plus plus to be honest but in any case <laughs> any other thoughts on the 222 no right okay so we head off next to the class 185 diesel hydraulic multiple unit which is in s plus plus now the class 185 is I'm got... just gonna say the ridiculously named it is yes you have an amazing livery a great operator you've got good catering you've got amazing interior furnishings with like fake wood that just looks amazing you've got two plus two standard class with tables at every seat and then the first class is i think similar to the 397 except you don't except it's only leather so not as good i would say uh yeah it's like a really really good train also like the horsepower is phenomenal like two and a half thousand horsepower for a free coach train they accelerate so quickly, they're so comfortable, so it's smooth. Three coaches. And, yes. And they're made by Siemens. Oh my god. They're the best Siemens train out there, Siemens Desiro. Best one. Also, I think like I think something like a three seven seven has got like a, a, a yeah. I think the class three seven seven has got like one and a half thousand horsepower. And it's <laughs> it's only four coaches long and then you've got like this guy here the 185 with like 2200 or 2500 horsepower for just three coaches it's absolutely brilliant i love the class 185 do diesel trains yeah you wouldn't have thought but it seems like they've somehow made their diesel trains better than their electric trains yeah. your highest ranked electric train we're going to see in a moment after we've finished talking about this train um, yeah, so there's no train oh, there's only one train in s plus 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 yes anyway, so so um i'm going to say um multiple if you're talking about multiple units and yeah but like locomotive all trains are my favorite but the, my favorite diesel electric multiple unit is the 222 my favourite diesel multiple unit or diesel hydraulic multiple unit is the 185. Um, and uh, yeah, do you have any other thoughts on the 185? I think everything that you said is, is very good. With... Yeah. In which case, we go on to my favourite electric multiple unit, the Class 390 Pendolino S. I absolutely love this phenomenal train. Now, Avanti is just infamous for terrible reliability, but other than that, every other part about this train is amazing. Right, I know it's a multiple unit that tilts, but it's silky smooth, it's incredibly comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. the, the livery is really good, like, the catering is amazing, especially in first class. You've got a good mix of toilets, or sorry, a good number of toilets, you've got, like, bicycle places, uh, another thing as well, you've, in the middle of first class, you've got mini fridges with bottles of water still and sparkling. And then that's not including, like, the kitchen, but also the buffet car as well. They've got a whole buffet car on the 390. And, like, the first... Like, so standard is 2 plus 2 standard with um, tables at every seat. And then the first class is 2 plus 1 reclining with tables at every... Fixed tables at every seat. And then there's like standard premium, which is the same as first, except you don't get the catering. But in there any several... case, Wait, there are more than two classes. Yeah, the three ninety actually has three classes. My God. That's yes. Rare. It's also incredibly good as well. I love the three ninety Pendolino. It's a tilting electric multiple unit 
but it's so comfortable. I love the 390 Pendolino. It's so good. Who's it operated? Who's it operated by? Avanti, unfortunately. But honestly, oh. like the 390 is so good. Like, uh, okay, there's personal bias because I've been on the 390 before. But I, I, I love, I love the 390 Pendant. It's such a good train. I absolutely love it. But do you have any other thoughts about uh, the, that train other than me waxing lyrical about it, obviously? And no, it's fine. Uh, right. In which case. Uh, yes, on the uh, bus. The Ain't now, City uh, 225. City trains are immediately going to be high. It's a locomotive hauled train, and it is my favourite electric locomotive hauled train. Going into the S plus plus tier minus the lag. Um, but yeah, it's my second favourite train of all time, not including like individual like train variants. Now the class ninety one is one electric locomotive, nine Mark IV coaches, and a Mark IV DVT on the end. Now it does have some signs of age. On the outside, the yeah. locomotive looks quite new, but the inside looks incredibly new because there's plenty of like oak wood furnishings like on the inside. Standard is two plus two, um, table two plus two seats with tables at every seat, and then the first class is two plus one reclining leather armchairs with fixed tables at every seat, and combine it with LNER's amazing catering. You've got like complimentary like meals in first class, and you've also got a buffet car as well. So another train with a buffet car. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, also because it's like locomotive Ford, it's just brilliant, flexible. Um, the liver is quite nice yeah. as well. The uh, yeah, the seats are quite good. Uh, what other things are there to talk about? What like the operator LNER government owns really good. The train's just amazing. It's also designed so that if you were to fit a tilting mechanism into it, yeah, it would still be compatible with the loading gauge. Uh, do you have any thoughts well, on it? I don't. So, I think we should continue on to the next To class. my favourite train, but there's actually like five, I think there's five versions of my favourite train in this tier list. My least favourite, my favourite, is the Scott Rail. Still operating today in the S plus plus tier. Now, I've got bad Wait, news. Your least, favorite, your least favorite or something is Scott Rail. What? Long story. I'll get to that later. But sadly, they're going to phase out these trains in a few years' time. Unfortunately. At old, I assume. But old is gold. No. It's so. It's out with the old, out with the old and in with the new is their philosophy. No, no, no. When we look at this tier list and when it's completed, the chist is out of the new and in with the old. But we're going to discuss at the end of the video. Yes. So the the Scott Rail one, right, so the catering is amazing. Sorry, the catering is good. There's a buffet car. There's complimentary meal service in first class. The livery is amazing. You get 2 plus 2 standard with tables at every seat. And then, like, 2 plus 1 reclining leather armchairs with ta fixed tables at every seat. And also charging ports, too. The operator's really good, Scott Rao, because it's got, like... Uh... Yeah. Government-owned, basically. Uh... And do you have any other thoughts on the... In Scott Rao in City 125? Oh, yeah, also, 2 plus 4. So it's, like, a really short formation. But any other thoughts on it? Uh, no. Nope. Nope, I think we should get on to the next 125. Which, in any case, is going to be the cross-country one. Now, cross-country being the operator is part of the reason why. Uh, because of, like, bad reliability. The okay. catering's, like, okay. Uh, nothing complimentary in first class, I think. Uh, the, two, the first class seats aren't leather. There's no buffet car. Um, but, yes, basically... It was 2 plus 7 formation as well, but um, just similar to the Scott Rao HST in that regard. Any other thoughts on that? Nope. Right, in which case, we head on to the Great Western Railway version. Also, 
Yes. Now, I'm not talking about the castle sets. They're a bit cheeky. They actually score below the Scott Rail. And I'm talking about the olden city sets, which are basically like Scott Rail's trains, except it's 2 plus 8. Um, the K yeah, the catering. Yeah, the, um, the doors, though, they weren't like those horrible, like, sliding doors. They were like those nice slam doors, like the drop, well, the drop light windows. They somehow make the train look like new. Somehow these doors look like new because like they're they're rectangular windows. They drop like windows. They close flush with the body side, and it just looks sick to be like hang out the window. If that's like the worst thing you can possibly do. Uh, yeah, any f the leverage are okay though. But do you have any thoughts on the Great Western Railway HST? Don't. No. Right. The last it's train. What? That's all right now. The last train in S++ is the LNER Intercity 125 in S++. Now, so basically, the Intercity 125, you've got two locomotives on each end. You've got nine Mark III coaches in between and a, another Class 43 on the end. So it's basically two first class coaches, a first class buffet car, and then like, I think it would be six standard class coaches after that. Standard class was 2 plus 2 with tables every seat. The first class was 2 plus 1 reclining leather armchairs with curtains, charging ports, reading lights, and four full width fixed tables at every seat. Oh, and also don't forget the livery was really good. The catering is, um, yeah, amazing because L and ER, so you get like full meals in first class. You get like a buffet car as well operated really good as well yeah uh, do you have any other thoughts on the LNER HST nope fair enough and last so is it, is that, but obviously but last the, but, but the most the last and by far anything but least the yes. first Great Western intercity one two five in S plus plus plus. Yeah, I know My it's God. like right. So let's okay. Fine. The seats were like roughly. It's hard to describe, but basically the first class two plus one. I'm um, not leather. I think they did recline. I don't think they had charging ports because this was like twenty years ago. Like the train I'm talking about because like this was refurbished into like many other iterations but the main reason why this is being featured uh the, obviously like, the, the food the, the food of the Pullman dining is just amazing because it's like one would say Michelin star level dining on a train it's just really fine quality dining delivery is like the main reason we're here we'll get to that in a moment the train's just absolutely brilliant first great western was quite a good operator but the thing is like livery is just so so good uh, now yeah you guys might realize I love this livery a bit too <laughs> it's the is it is the Lions livery yes like honestly this is a perfect perfect livery like just like, so futuristic like the way how you don't have I think it's like it does not look 40 years old. Definitely not. It's so clean and crisp. Like, oh my goodness me. Right. One of the only things I'd actually do to this livery is add a yellow bar. The arrow stripe to denote first class. But other than that, I would not change this livery. At least for first rate western. It would be that. Every other livery would be based upon this design. Because it is so good. Like the purple fading into the lights. So you've got the deep purple fading into the sky blue. You've got the neon light blue, uh, cyan, strong blue, and pink dynamic line swiveling at cab end. You've got pink doors contrasting with the rest of the exterior. It is absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely love this version of the Intercity 125 is truly, truly my favourite train of all time. It is 
my oh my goodness me i i'm actually waxing lyrical about how good this train is right and rightfully so to be honest pardon rightfully so thank you that i appreciate it um yeah we were talking about like the what were you going to say earlier about like all the different tiers yeah match s plus 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 yes it's worth all the pluses indeed it is <laughs> and then like you've got the extreme comparison to the other end which is like x t <laughs> i mean i tier. and we all know what's an x tier if we just looked at the top and bottom tier alone the motto would be out with the new and in with the old. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because this Libra was last around in 2006. <laughs> Sorry. Well, which, what, what livery, uh, what is the ugliest livery? The ugliest livery, oh my goodness me. Right. Great Western Railway is a contender looking through this. But I know there's going Boring to be green. something worse. So like it, I think it goes the, I well. Think the look, seven six is livery yeah, bad. Yeah, probably. The, the, look, Great Western Railway's livery goes well with the HST, but with not much else. Right, looking through the liveries, I'm yet to find something worse. Right, so the C two C livery is a bit bland. Ooh, I'm thinking about the different three, seven liveries. No, no, this uh, Thameslink Great Northern is really, really, really bland. It's basically just factory set, especially the seven one seven. I don't like the look of the three four five. To be honest, it it doesn't look good. Oh, that's because it has to be purple for the Elizabeth line. Yeah, but like the way how they've designed it, with, like blue and white as well, like. You could have at least mixed it with. Cheap for pub. Like you could have mixed it's... it with orange at least. Yeah. Like, I just yeah. Uh, I'm thinking the ugliest livery either goes to the Elizabeth line with its three four five, the Southeastern's three seven six, or Great Western Railways IETs, which just look so so old and ugly. Compared to the Interstate 25, like a brand new and cross pressure modern. Ironically, the older train looks newer and it's so crisp. Wow, compared to this, which is okay. And of course, my local trains are the ones in queue here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I were to say, I know the case perfectly, where if I were to live in a countryside, um, I would have, I'll be travelling on trains at least, at least in the lower end of A tier, with the slash 9, or at most the 375 other subclasses in S+. plus. Now, Matcha, do you have any other final thoughts for any trains in this entire tier list? I don't, I think... I think what we've done is great. Yes, it is absolutely brilliant. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. We hope you enjoy. So, I'm going to wrap the video up, guys. It has been a phenomenal two hours, 13 minutes long. Um, thank you all yeah. so much for watching. If you um, did stick around to the end of the video or you just skipped to the end to see what that would look, what the tier list would look like. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, all the good stuff. I know some of you may have probably just skipped to the end to see what it looked like, and that's completely fine. But if you wanted to see my different justifications, I, unfortunately you'll have to watch the entire video from start to finish and listen to every single explanation in detail. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.